Hello, good evening. This is Business Live. I am Emmanuel Abwaji Riafi. Coming up in tonight's edition, ahead of next month's Multi TV Habitat Fair in August this year, the second mini fair has opened at the West Hills Mall here in Accra. Talo Oil is to start commercial production of crude from the Trinibua, Enira and Intome field with an initial production of about 23,000 barrels a day. And Parliament decides to extend final sitting to next Tuesday, August um, 2, to enable it deal with passage of the Public Financial Management Bill and proposed amendments to the Bank of Ghana Act. These are the headlines we're working with uh, tonight and you can get the details right here in a jiffy. But in the meantime, you can join us online by tweeting at Joy Business GH, Facebook, Joy Business is our page. And for more business news updates, log on to myjoyonline.com slash business. We're back after this. To our first story of the day, individuals and institutions that may need solutions for their housing-related challenges have an opportunity to do so between today the 29th and Sunday the 31st of August, I beg your pardon, of July. It is at the West Hills Mall where the final housing clinic ahead of next month's multi-TV habitat fair is being held. Daryl Kwa was at the mall to see what preparations are so far. I came to visit my family, spend time with my family, like a holiday, at the same time looking at some properties around here. Gospel musician Enes Meza has made his way to the West Hills Mall to look up a dream home. He flew from the United Kingdom to Ghana not too long ago. And then I've entered um, Elegant Court and I'm quite impressed with um, the conversation I had with the lady over there. So yeah, I really am impressed and looking forward to probably doing business with them. Luckily for him, he may have got what he was searching for. It's why the organizers, Multi TV, put together the fair. Stephen Esong is project coordinator. Now, this housing fair has been running for the past seven years, and the purpose of Multi TV Habitat Fair is to help solve the housing needs of the people in the country. We have seen a lot of lands around Weja and West Osmore. We said, okay, there are new developers coming on board. Why don't we bring the housing fair to people closer to that side and help solve their housing needs instead of always focusing on conference center. Let's focus on other areas that are now developing and then get more people, help solve their housing needs in that area. So we decided to come to West Hills Mall this today, which is 29th, and then tomorrow, which is 30th of July, 2016. And we'll be here between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. every day. So Ennis is uh, one of the several people who are thronging the West Hills Mall to have a feel of what is going on here. We've got several exhibitors. They are displaying products that are relevant to the housing industry. And so we are moving uh, to the Sethi Realty Stand. Of course, you are one of the major sponsors of this event. Up ahead, if the camera will pan, you've got the Nyamidjia City. And what's the attack? The future of affordable living. And then we've got the Energy Commission. And then we've got Elegant Homes. This was where Ernest came to. And of course, he found something that could help him out. And then we've got Samsung. You couldn't have a house without having a gadget in there. Gives you an idea the kinds of businesses that are displaying here. And it's a two-day fair, people trickling in in their numbers, in their ones and twos, um, trying to, you know, have a bargain, trying to work out a discount, that would help them. And take a look at that. That is a free car wash underway. It's one of the side attractions to this event. So, you know, if you are the kind that is busy, you could come around, have your car wash for free here at the West Hills Mall. The main fair takes place on the 12th to 14th of August at the Accra International Conference Centre. Daryl Kwao for Joy Business. 
All right, so you can make a way to the West Hills Mall to partake in the mini multi -habit, multi TV habitat fair. Now, moving on, commercial production of crude oil from the Trinibua, Enira, and Intome field will start with an initial production of about 23,000 barrels a day. Officials of Talu disclosed this in London as an engagement with investors around the world. Commercial production of oil at the 10 field is expected to start from the second week in August. The projected target was about 50,000 barrels a day, ramping up to 80,000. Chief Operating Officer Paul McDane says they are working to improve production. In 10, I, I can't see a scenario where we won't start to um, infill drill on 10. You know, the, these wells, they have large capacity. We're estimating next year that even with the limited well stock we have, because the wells will produce 10 to 15, some, some up maybe as high as 20,000 barrels a day. So what, what we would intend to do is look at what these wells produce. Um, we would have preferred to have had some flexibility that if they don't meet plateau, we could have added a well or two. We don't have that. So I think it's much more likely that we'll see performance from the field. We, we're estimating that to be in the kind of mid to low 60s for next year. And then as soon as that loss is decided, we would add, you know, even one or two more wells would then start to ramp you back up um, and head back up towards a kind of full year of plateau as you get through the second half of 18 and into 19. The way it will work is we effectively, we've got a number of risers and we bring on each riser, you know, risers might be 20, 25,000 balls a day. You'll bring that on, you'll get that stable, you'll make sure the system's working. If there's no hiccups, which often there is, and you shut back down and then have to restart again, if, the, if that system's working, then you're likely to then bring in another 20, 25, 30,000 balls a day. So it can, if it moves smoothly, it can ramp up fairly quickly. If you have a number of hiccups, as you often do with commissioning kind of new complex top sites, um, it tends to be a series of kind of stop starts. Um, rather than layering on, you know, we know we're going to get 15 here and then another five and another, it, it tends to be large blocks and the pace of those blocks coming in just is how smooth the, uh, the final uh, kind of commissioning with hydrocarbons is going. Though they said to hold over 2 billion barrels of crude oil deposits, officials of Talo have said that they are hoping to start exporting gas from the field for power production from next year. Now, the immediate boss of NIB, Enes Agbishi, has been appointed as a new managing director of GCB Bank. He takes over from Simon Donu, who left the bank in March this year after six years of service. Mr. Agbesi holds an MBA and PGD, as well as a diploma in accounting. He started his work with the then Ghana Cooperative Bank in 1985, rising through the ranks to become deputy manager in 2000. After leaving the Cooperative Bank, he then moved to the International Commercial Bank, now First Bank of Nigeria. He left ICB in 2006 as divisional head in charge of sales and business development, estates and general services, and retail banking. He again joined another private bank, Unibank, in January 2008 as head of sales and business development and later as head of banking operations. He remained in this position until March 2014 when he was appointed as the MD of NIB. He has spent his entire working life in banking and finance. From documents that we have seen, from documents that we've seen, he will formally assume office from August 1st this year. Away from that government's quest to secure the passage of two crucial bills before Parliament rises for holidays might now be realized. The House, which was expected to break today, has decided to extend its final sitting to next Tuesday, August 2. This is to deal with the passage of the Public Financial Management Bill and the proposed amendments to the Banking of Ga Bank of Ghana Act. George Raffi has more on the impact of these bills on Ghana's program with the IMF. The two bills for some economists is very critical if government is able to meet the proposed August 29 date by the IMF for its executive board to meet and review Ghana's performance under the IMF program so far. 
the Public Financial Management Bill, which replaces the current Financial Administrative Act, is seeking to enhance prudent management of public funds and budget credibility as well as transparency, whilst the proposed amendment to the Bank of Ghana Act is seeking to promote the Bank of Ghana's independence and restrict lending to government. The two bills are part of conditions or what some may describe as prior actions before the IMF board meets from the end of next month on Ghana's program with the fund instead of the initial September ending date proposed. Joy Business understands that the House, which arose late last night, was able to make some crucial progress in the passage of the Public Financial Management Bill. However, one is not sure about the amendments to the Bank of Ghana Act, but sources say government is likely to stick to the zero financing. But there will be a provision in the Act where government can, under emergency situations, borrow from the Bank of Ghana up to 2 or 5 percent. However, there are concerns about whether Parliament will be able to pass all these bills on time for the IMF board meeting. The Finance Minister said Tekwa is optimistic the government will be able to meet the August 29 deadline. Well, apart from all these bills, there are other things the government has to deal with. That is the completion of the audit of state-owned enterprises to assess their financial viability. For many, fast-tracking all these things for the board meeting to come on is not just only for the expected $116 million that will come in, but a report that will convince donors and investors that Ghana is on track to stabilize the economy and even attempts to raise some $1 billion through the Eurobond. So let us not forget about the expected $400 million that will come in from the donors if government is successful or the IMF board meeting. Now some players in the economy are reiterating calls for a renewed focus on and commitment to developing the manufacturing sector. This according to them is because even though the sector's contribution has been declining over the years, it still holds the key to the country's economic growth. The managing director of Unilever Ghana, Maidi Akutu, is one of such advocates and she explains their position to Joy Business at the Ishmael Yamsen and Associates Executive Business Roundtable discussions. I think Ghana has been through some difficult economic times, but recent years and our current situation is particularly difficult. And if you look at the statistics, last year, um, especially around manufacturing and industry, there was actually a decline in Ghana. Therefore, we need to really support each other to help to make sure that the industry and manufacturing sector grows. It's one of the fundamental pillars of any economy. And therefore, whether big or small, we need to make sure it's a viable part of the economy. We now bring you an update of prices of some selected commodities on the markets. A bag of maize gained in only one market and also lost in one market this week. A 100 kilograms bag of maize sold for 190 Ghana cities in Accra, representing a gain of 36% over that of the previous week of 144 Ghana cities. In Kumasi, the commodity lost by 3% to close the week at 170 Ghana cities from a previous price of 175 Ghana cities. On the retail market, a kilo of maize lost 6% in Boku to close the week at 1.2 Ghana cities from a previous price of 1.30 Ghana cities, whilst in other markets the price remained the same. A crate of tomatoes lost in only one market and also gained in one market this week. The highest loss of 20% was made in Techiman. A crate of tomatoes was sold for 200 Ghana cities from last week's price of 250 Ghana cities. In Accra market, the commodity gained by 7% to close the week at 250 Ghana cities from a previous value of 233 Ghana cities. This is Business Live. Let's now update ourselves with some developments in business elsewhere in the world. Thank you very much for staying and welcome back to Business Live. Now waiting to hear how your stocks, commodities and of course the currencies fared on the stock exchange today for the week. We're joined by our regular analyst, Beta Atubiga of uh, the GN Research to tell us more about how the, fed, how, how the stocks and the commodities fed. Good evening and welcome to Business Life, Beta. 
Good evening, Emmanuel. All right, so how did the trading on the stock market fare today? Well, um, today's market was not different from what we've seen this week. Uh, we've actually seen um, not much equities move in terms of price changes. And today we had just two movers, that was FML GCV. GCV gained a Tesla, and then FML went up by 43 pesos to close at 8 cities, 93 pesos per cent. So if investors are waiting for uh, FML to actually drop for them, it's an advantage of, uh, it's, probably, it's not too late, but it was late because um, FML did very well today, going by 43 pesos to close 8 cities, 93 pesos per unit share. And yesterday we saw a huge group of shares being trading in FMO and some other equities, and uh, we saw very high volume. We want to be a of equity trading today, and today we saw quite a number of shares trading, but not as much as we saw today. So this is the only move that we had. We can say for GCB, one thing that actually influenced its price movement today uh, was the fact that it's one of the equities that has released its first half financials as a half year financials um, on the stock market you look at the first half financials you realize that most of their indicators were very positive their profits went up by over 25 uh, percent for first half year in your basis uh, so we can see that uh, they did very well and that is actually reflecting in the share price of GCB. and uh, we are expecting further uh, marginal appreciation in GCB before year end. So if you haven't bought your shares yet, we we'll advise that you take advantage of the stock market now the prices are relatively low. But some right. equities are yet, uh, will definitely pick up within this period. Now, better let's, let's look at the commodities now. The oil, the gold, and cocoa. Okay, so um, with the commodity market, we wouldn't say much has happened, but uh, you know, crude oil, for instance, has been within or uh, below 50 US dollars per barrel, and we can say that it's, the commodity market has been a bit stable in terms of price movement. So we've seen some marginal up and down there, but it's quite, um, let's say, stable, and it's still trading below 50 US dollars per barrel. All right. Okay, thank you very much, Beta. That'll be it for now. That was Beta Atubiga, our stock market analyst updating us on how the stock market fared uh, at the close of the week. We're now taking a break for our interview of the day segment. Now the upcoming general elections make it crucial for the Bank of Ghana to step up its regulation of banks. That's according to economist and director of International Institute of Democracy and Electoral Assistance, Professor Adebayo Olukoshi. According to him, this should avert arbitrary funding of political activities at the expense of the banks, as well as illicit cash flows in the banking system, especially in an election year. Professor Olukoshi tells Joy Business the central bank can learn from other countries in this bit. I think the rules of financing have to be enforced, and where they don't exist, they must be created. Money has become an insidious factor in politics, um, and uh, the integrity of the political system in too many parts of the world is being undermined by the uh, adverse negative influence uh, of money. Um, godfathers uh, basically manipulating candidates, uh, sometimes sponsoring candidates across political parties um, of uh, corporate interests, basically buying policy by buying candidates and sponsoring them. Uh, all of these have uh, created a much greater awareness around the world about the need to set rules of financing, including first the transparency of financing and secondly the magnitude of financing and thirdly uh, even uh, questions related to the sources of the financing because sometimes it's also criminal. And that will be a wrap for Business Life today and of course for the week and we're taking a break here until next Monday. But until then, you can keep on tweeting if you want to tweet at Joy Business uh, GH is the handle. And you can go to Facebook to log on to Joy Business. For more business news, you can also log on to myjoyonline.com slash business. It's been a great pleasure having you throughout the week on Business Life. I'll catch you up again on Monday. Good evening.